Good afternoon and welcome to St. Valentine Catholic Church as part of Our Lady of Hope Parish. We especially welcome any visitors who may be joining us for Mass. We also invite anyone who is watching on our YouTube channel to join us for Mass at any of our parish churches, St. Valentine's, St. Germain's, Nativity, or St. Gabriel's. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. This Mass is being offered for Joan Winko. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Mike Seslowicz. Today's Mass parts can be found in the leaflets and the pews. The hymns for today can be found in the red hymnals. As we come together, let us join in singing hymn number 512, Christ Be Our Light, hymn number 512. afternoon in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. We gather as Christ truly is our light and has led us here by the light of faith. Times you have held to live each day by the light of faith. We now ask forgiveness. commanded us to listen to your beloved Son. Be pleased, you pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, through a spiritual sight made pure, when we rejoice to behold your glory, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding me from your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. In the land of the living, I will walk with God all my days. In the land of the living, I will walk with God all my days. How can I make a return for the goodness of God, this saving cup. I will bless and sing and call the name of God. In the land of the living, I will walk with God all my days. The dying of those who keep faith is precious to our God. I am your servant, called from your hands. You have set me free. In the land of the living, I will walk with God all my days. To you I will offer my thanks and call upon your name. You are my promise for all to see. I love your name, oh God. In the land of the living, I will walk with God all my days. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who could be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? 
Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Glory, praise, and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory, praise, and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son, hear him. Glory, praise, and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. It was transfigured before them, and their clothes became dazzling white, such as no full on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. We're all familiar with the saying that history repeats itself. And that's certainly true in many, many ways, in our own lives even. Certainly as a church, that is very true. We know that liturgical seasons follow each other regularly. And we again enter the mystery of each season, seeing the life of Christ, and then praying God will help us to apply it in our own lives, what is being celebrated. We find in this season of Lent that the same thing happens. Every year during Lent, for the first two Sundays, we hear on the first Sunday of Lent the gospel concerning Jesus' temptations. And every second Sunday of Lent, we hear of the transfiguration of Jesus. We know, of course, that each gospel writer gives certain details and points If we're paying attention last week to the gospel, it was very short, wasn't it? People were kind of astounded. It was only two, two sentences. Whereas Matthew has 11 sentences to describe the same incident, and Luke has 13. In the case of Matthew, Matthew shows him easy by saying then. They all happened after Jesus' baptism. And so after his baptism, then the Holy Spirit led Jesus. Luke says that filled with the Spirit, Jesus left the Jordan and then was led by the Spirit into the desert. And last week said the Spirit drove Jesus. But what the gospel didn't say, but did say in our Bibles, for whatever reason, lectionary chooses to leave out two words, at once, 
really began last week's gospel. It's really the immediacy of that thing happening. And sometimes in our lives, things happen so quickly, don't they? Things we don't expect. But last week, Mark gave us an important clue to that. The the gospel writers don't. In those two simple lines, he also said that Jesus was among wild beasts. I don't know about you. If I'm in a desert with wild beasts, part of me looking over my shoulder, I try to get my hearing a little more attuned. Keep abreast. Find a place to run if I needed to. What would happen again? Certainly Jesus in prayer. I said, might have been distracted a few times. I've been distracted in prayer. I think maybe you have too. We're also told the angels ministered to Jesus in that episode. Perhaps if a wild beast did come near Jesus, perhaps an angel may have prevented it or stopped them at the last minute or ministered to him if he got a small bite or a cut or it might be. And today we come to this episode. Again, there are words not utilized. The three evangelists who do recount it again, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, again, John doesn't give us such an episode, nor did he give us an episode of the temptation of Jesus in his Gospels. But there is a part that is missing. It says that after six days, and it follows in both Matthew and Mark, and with Luke, the presentation of Jesus about carrying one's cross. After six days... Strange. But Luke changes it slightly. He says, about eight days after Jesus said this. So was it six days later or eight days later? I don't really know. But it reminds me of something that happens in my life and perhaps in yours. Have you tried to situate events in your life chronologically? Have you tried to think about something that happened in your family and you say it happened on this day? And your brother says, no, 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 it happened on this day. It happened, you know what happened that way? We sometimes forget those little details or get them a little confused in our own perception of them or remembrance of them. And that's very true. Even the gospel writers, inspired by the Spirit, gave conflicting dates. After six days, about eight days later. But one thing is certain, this event was certainly a marvelous event. One that the apostles at that time didn't really understand. They really noticed that Jesus was there, Moses and Elijah, and suddenly they're gone. And Jesus is alone. And Jesus tells them not to tell anyone. Part of them might have wanted not to because who would believe them? Who might believe them and what they were privileged to see? But nonetheless, they were charged to tell it once Jesus had raised from the dead. But they didn't even know what that meant. Are you ever confused about a point within our faith? Ever wonder what it truly means? We can share in that with them. They didn't fully understand. They didn't comprehend. Even after Jesus was crucified, when he was placed in the tomb, they still don't understand. They didn't know. They weren't able to piece things together. But only after he appeared to them in his risen self and explained the scriptures to them and also the disciples on the road to Emmaus, did they then understand? Perhaps you're not meant to understand until we finish our life. Until we come before God and Jesus himself explains to us, answers the many questions you and I may have. Let us pray that nonetheless in these Lenten days we grow in our trust of God is promised to us before today when the questions we have may be answered by Jesus himself as you stand before him in his eternal glory. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things remain, for us and for our salvation, give not our hands, and by the Holy Spirit was a part of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he suffered and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
this landed journey of faith we present again our needs to our loving God. Our response is God of compassion hear our prayer. For the church that our transfigured Lord may guide and inspire us to give witness to God's glory we pray God of compassion hear our prayer. For world leaders and each of us here, may we fight injustice and racism, violence and aggression, and work to transform our local and national areas into one of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. God of compassion, hear our prayer. For those who have health conditions that are painful, terminal, or difficult to treat, that their suffering may be transfigured by the Lord's presence in their lives. We pray to the Lord, God of compassion, hear our prayer. For catechumens and the elect preparing for the Easter sacraments, may they always remember to listen to the voice of the Lord in their lives. We pray, God of compassion, hear our prayer. For all those whose lives are threatened or made difficult by the extreme storms and weather patterns, may God watch over them and keep them safe. We pray. For all of us here, may the Lord encourage us in perseverance in our Lenten resolutions. We pray. For all who have died, especially Marie Burke, Pandora Chirilla, Earl Hockendoner, Teresa Martin, and Linda Misson, may they know God's lasting covenant with them in the kingdom. And for the soul of Joan C. Winko, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. For all of the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, We pray. We hear of the disciples not fully understanding a wonderful sight that they behold. We hear of Abraham, who has dedicated himself to you and has now found the child of the promise in his own son, being put to an extreme test and your compassionate mercy that would stay his hand. Help us to remember that you are a God of compassion to each one of us, no matter what we do, no matter how far we stray. Help us to treat one another also with compassion and care. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the altar is prepared, let us join in singing hymn number 770, Transform Us As You Transfigured, hymn number 770. Transform us as you transfigured 
once spoke with those holy ones. We surrounded by the witness of those saints whose work is done. Live in this world as your body. Chosen daughters, chosen sons. Transform us as you transfigured would not stay within our shrine. Keep us from our great temptation. Time and truth we quickly bind. Lead us down those daily pathways where our love is not And pray, brothers and sisters, your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. For this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanses of our faults, and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after you had told the disciples of the coming death, on the mountain, on the holy mountain, manifested to them his glory, to even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection and to the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning our city at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. We we'll pray upon your people's offerings and pray on the power of your spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, 
and whom we too are your sons and daughters. The ones were lost and could not approach you. You loved us with the greatest love. Your son who alone is just, handed himself over to death, not to stain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross, but before his arms are outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant. He desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, now he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once we're giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that the power of the Holy Spirit, as if partake of this one bread and one chalice, may we gather into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always communion in mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and William and William and Mark, his assisting bishops. Help us work together for the coming of your kingdom. Under the iron we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, Valentine and all the saints, with our deceased brothers and sisters, and we humbly commend to your mercy. Then Frida laughed in the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation. We sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you stand charge of my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those watching at home, as you are not able to receive the Eucharist at this celebration, the following prayer is an opportunity for you to make a worthy spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you are already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. There are a couple of bulletin bites this evening. Wouldn't it be great to get away from it all March 1 through 3rd or March 22nd to 24th? Be sure to see the top of page 9 in today's bulletin. On a mission from God, part 1, the Bethlehem Christian Mission will be visiting our parish next weekend. Olive wood rosaries, crucifixes, and other religious articles will be available for purchase after some of our masses. On a Mission from God, Part 2, please reserve March 18th and 19th from 7 to 9 p.m. as special occasions for prayer and reflection during this holy season. See page 7 of today's bulletin. And we do ask your prayer. We know that we certainly always pray for and with each other. This past week while in Washington, D.C., our auxiliary bishop, Mark Ekman, a native son, had to be hospitalized. So we ask your prayer for Bishop Mark, that God can to offer him his healing power and touch at this time. The second item, too, we're a little nebulous about the Bethlehem Christian Family Ministry that will be joining us. There is one gentleman who, by God's grace, is a survivor of various form of cancer, who is the person who brings the articles. Because he's by himself, usually, he can't be at two masses at the same time. And so we're not sure which masses exactly we'll have exhibits after, but of course we'll announce at those masses so that you'll know. He's likely to hit three of our four churches, it seems, the way the schedules work, but we're not sure which of those masses who have a setup for us to certainly, those who want to purchase any items from the Holy Land. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace, the Mass is now ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our Lady of Hope, Saint Joseph, pray for us. Take up your cross, the Savior said, if you would my disciple be. Take up your cross with willing heart and humbly follow after me. Take up your cross, let not its weight fill your weak spirit with alarm. His strength shall bear your spirit up, embrace your heart and nerve your heart. Take up your cross, heed not the shame, and let your foolish heart be still. The Lord for you accepted death upon a cross on Calvary's hill. 